Monitoring and restoration are very important aspects of our work here at Grand Bay. Monitoring helps scientists establish current status of environmental conditions and recognize long-term trends. This information is used to assess ecosystem health and inform restoration implementation. It gives us insight into which methods can be deployed and their effects on the environment. Restoration is meant to replace or augment missing or damaged natural processes using the least amount of manipulation possible to achieve maximum benefit to wildlife or ecosystem health. Without fire, the savanna becomes overgrown, the understory is deprived of sunlight, and shade-tolerant species thrive. This changes the very structure of the savanna. To keep track of changes like these, scientists use vegetation monitoring to determine plant communities in a given area. After monitoring the plants over extended periods, scientists can also look how the vegetation communities change over time or in response to certain restoration practices. To do this, they establish long-term monitoring plots across the reserve and record species within the plot each season. Scientists are also on the lookout for invasive plants like popcorn tree and kogan grass that outcompete and displace our native species. Invasive animals also cause much damage at the reserve. Feral hogs are able to reproduce very quickly and have no predators. This makes them very difficult to control. To properly manage savanna, we must know about invasive animals and natives as well. Certain bird species are good indicators of savanna health. Scientists determine their presence at Grand Bay by surveying the savannas. To do this, they disturb the brush with long poles and record species of birds that flutter out. Other species are not as subjective to these methods, such as reptiles and amphibians. These animals must be trapped. Aquatic herbs are caught using minnow traps after which they can be easily identified and released. Terrestrial species are caught with drift fences. They come into contact with the fence and then move in either direction until they are caught in a trap, where they can be examined and released without harm. Savannas cannot exist without fire. Therefore, the restoration practices that we employ are meant to mimic fire. Hand clearing is a method that we use to remove woody vegetation or trees with the use of hand tools or chainsaws in order to restore light to the herbaceous understory. This method is relatively inexpensive, but a very slow process. Mechanical clearing is a process used to remove woody vegetation small trees through the use of heavy machinery like a tractor, drum chopper, or mulcher. This method will increase the amount of incident light reaching the herbaceous layer. This method can take a lot of time and can be very expensive, but it can occur in areas that aren't ideal for burning. Chemical treatments remove non-native vegetation through the application of herbicides. Native vegetation can also be removed with this method, such as an abundance of woody vegetation. There are many options when it comes to herbicides. They have been thoroughly researched and tested strenuously. Land managers will look for chemicals that kill the target species and have the least effect on non-target species. The method of prescribed burning reduces woody vegetation and enhances native herbaceous plant communities through deliberate introduction of controlled fires. Restoration specialists introduce fires to selected areas every two to four years. This is usually the best method. 
but there are many limiting factors such as the construction of fire lanes, safety, smoke, nearby houses, roads, and of course, weather.